I wonder if you like to send or collect postcards when you travel. Many years ago, there was uh, a, a bit of a frenzy around collecting them. It was very fashionable. You wouldn't go overseas without sending a heap of postcards. It was referred to as postcarditis. You might have been one of the people with that. I love getting and receiving postcards. I still do it, even if I just go on a holiday here in uh, Western Australia. I want to introduce you to Elise Batchelor. She's a teacher from St Cecilia's in Port Hedland and she started the International Postcard Project in 2012, which is helping connect kids to remote in remote areas to the rest of the world. Hello to you, Elise. Good afternoon, Jill. What a fantastic project. Can you just tell me how it started and what it is? Oh, look, it was basically creative inspiration. Sometimes I get ideas and they won't go away. And it was a kindergarten class, in fact, to start with, and we had kindy airlines. And I thought, well, I also wanted to connect with the parents in the school. We're always looking to reach out to the community. And so I said, parents, can you just let everyone you know, you know, on social media, that um, we will send you a postcard if you send us one first. And within about a term, we had 250 postcards come in from every continent and we mapped them according to continent and the kids made these little passports and they wrote about them and drew pictures about them and then we made our own class postcard and then we replied to absolutely everyone in the world who sent us their address. It was fantastic. Um, how, How did the kids react, Elise? Uh, they absolutely loved it and to this day some of my most treasured photos from teaching are each class holding up their passports at the end of this journey with a massive world map we have in the classroom and postcards just littering the walls and even up the ceiling <laughs> some years. <laughs> Did you have any idea in your mind when you start? I mean, you could not possibly have, have guessed your own success. Oh, absolutely not. And one doesn't sort of do it for that, but it's when it sort of sprung out and uh, became really exciting for the kids, I suddenly discovered I can actually cross this over to different sort of areas of the curriculum. So now we graph them according to continent and we do probability according to, you know, will we get a postcard from North Korea or Antarctica or some of the more rare places that when you do get that postcard, that you know, the, the whole class erupts with, you know, excitement and joy. So have you had postcards from North Korea and Antarctica? We have. We have. It's, and it's been phenomenal. And I get the chills when it happens. So this year, um, um, I'd love to say hello to my beautiful students in year two at St Cecilia's who were thrilled last week because one of our mums in class decided to you know, reach out a little bit. And we've actually had not one, but two postcards come in, one from Mawson Station. So hello to Shane and the team at Mawson Station and one from the station master, Ali Dean, who's at Casey Station in Antarctica, both of whom sent beautiful messages and all sorts of photos and penguins that are just very, very cute. Oh, don't get much cuter than penguins. No. No, no. and a photo that's a day old from Antarctica. I can't believe it. I'm looking at Antarctica now, you know. Awesome. Well, I was going to ask you about the sort of messages that people uh, write and the sort of person. Can you pick the sort of person that might respond or just is it very, very varied? Absolutely not. We've had everything from, um, uh, you know, nomads who are travelling around Australia to nomads who are travelling around the world who will send us a postcard from literally every port they go to on a boat with no return address ever, no thought that, you know, they expect to reply just out of the goodness of their hearts that will do that. And then you'll have others, whether it's family members or extended family members, often from Africa. You know, we'll have things come from Botswana and suddenly there'll be this address. You're thinking, is that an actual address? But we'll actually write a postcard and, you know, send it back to Botswana. But some of the more rare ones have been, yes, North Korea, we have had a digger, uh, Australian digger in Taran Kot, uh in Afghanistan. And last year, we also had one from the Gaza Strip. So tell us about, uh, I mean, the kids are obviously really excited I um, and hard to speak for all of them, but I imagine it would foster uh, just a huge interest and curiosity about uh, different parts of the world. 
Absolutely. And that's something that's sort of organically developed over time and, and runs itself in a way in that I tie in every continent we go to. We go to a new continent every fortnight. We do stories and picture books from those continents. So, for example, today we got to do my most favourite story ever, which is uh, the story of Mr Chicken Goes to Paris by the beautiful Australian author and illustrator Lee Hobbs. And they're just trying to speak in French accents now. <laughs> you no idea what they're saying, and, and I don't either. Um, but we will then learn to draw Mr Chicken and they're, you know, they're re- discovering that they've read about the Eiffel Tower or the, or Notre Dame or, you know, and it is. It's, it's this organically beautiful, beautiful dream of one day, not this year, but travelling to see it all. Yeah, so this year, well, we're... we're um... Uh, speaking, if you've just tuned in to Elise Batchelor, she's a West Australian teacher from St Cecilia's in Port Hedland. And hello to the Year 2 students in uh, Port Hedland from St Cecilia's, the whole school. So um, it has been a bit different this year, uh, Elise, as you've referenced. How has it been working out? Well, I sort of made a a difficult and wise decision that uh, this year we're actually not collecting real postcards. And I thought, how, how can that take shape now? But each year I build a very simple website for um, the students to write blog posts in and for us to learn about the countries and to keep people updated who'd like to follow along. But up this year we've added a, a where are you page to it where people could actually just jump onto our little website and send us a virtual postcard. Just fill out your continent so we can graph the continents according to where they come in and send a little message, ask a question. And for those people who do send their address in that, We've still got our own postcard that we've just made from our own photo competition and we'll still reply to them ourselves from here because we're in a nice COVID-free zone in Port Hedland. Oh, it's a lovely thing, Elise. So um, how do people just uh, give us a bit more information on how people find you and where they can send postcards? Absolutely, yes. So we have a, uh, a website and I can quite simply give you the name at each year, one of the students gets to name our airline and one student wins a logo competition. So our airline this year is Country Crew Airlines. And so our website is called CC Airlines, as in Country Crew Airlines, ccairlines.wordpress.com. And it's as simple as going to there. And there'll be a tab at the top saying, where are you? And <laughs> you can just <laughs> click there and let us know. Elise, what an absolutely glorious project. And when you when you were initially thinking of uh, connecting these kids in a remote community all around the world, do you think you've uh, you've succeeded? Do these kids feel connected? I I would like to think they do. I would like to think that there's a joy that's coming from them wanting to be part of the world and understand the wider world. And the bonus then this year is that our students, ironically, are more connected than many others because whilst we're geographically remote, we're not homeschooling. We're not um, in, you know, we're not away from our peers. So we feel it a great privilege to be able to reach out to lots of other children and families who are perhaps alone who might like to say hi and communicate. Well, and there's just nothing like um, the communication of a postcard. I think it's a lovely thing. Elise, what a fabulous project and thank you so much for sharing it with us. You're most welcome, Jill.